Hi, everyone. Um, yeah. Okay, I, I think we're going to start. Um, okay, so uh, so in this talk, I'm going to talk to you about um, how to do Python uh, from Scala. And uh, more specifically, I'm going to, to focus on the perspective of tooling. So how can Scala tooling help us do Python from Scala? And um, I'm going to discuss uh, what we have for that and also what we don't have for that. So that's why it's the, the state of a Python support in, uh, in Scala tooling. So if you don't know me, um, I'm Alex Archambault or Alexandre Archambault. Uh, I've been doing Scala since 2013 um, and I've been involved in open source Scala since 2014. I've been, in 2015, I wrote, I started a project called uh, Coursier, which uh, became the, the main dependency manager of uh, Scala. And I'm also the, the author of a few other tools, such as Almond, which is a Scala kernel for, uh, for Jupyter, and more recently, um, I'm the original author of Scala CLI, which I started from uh, Vertus Lab. And I um, <coughs> also have a few contributions in other, uh, other Scala projects, such as Ammonite or Shapeless, and also Metals and many smaller contributions in, in other uh, Scala projects. Um, and, yeah, and before that, I even did a bit of uh, Python and so in this talk, I'm going to try to connect both, uh, both things. So uh, before I dive a bit deeper in, uh, in, in this topic, um, uh, we, we can wonder uh, why would we want Python support in Scala. And I think to answer that question, we need to, to have a, a broader look at things and, um, and wonder about what, what should be the, the future of, uh, of Scala, the, the language. And one direction that emerged uh, in the recent years is um, maybe we should make Scala become some kind of a Python-like uh, general purpose programming language. And um, so rather than uh, you know, being the, some kind of Java++ that Scala has been when it started. And so a question that naturally arises uh, if Scala is, is to go into that direction is uh, what about uh, directly using Python libraries from Scala code. And uh, that's why I'm going to, to show you here. So um, for that, I'm going to use the ScalaPy uh, library. So uh, basically, ScalaPy is a project started by uh, Shadaj Ladad uh, a few years ago already. And uh, so the idea of ScalaPy to do Python from Scala is to embed a Python interpreter in the, the JVM process. So basically, ScalaPy loads a library called uh, libpython, which uh, ships with, uh, with Python. And uh, ScalaPy provides a high-level API for, for it. Um, so in particular, it handles things like, uh, you know, as we have a JVM and a Python in the same process, it we have objects managed by the JVM by its GC and objects managed by ref counting from Python, and ScalaPy handles uh, synchronizing things that are supposed to live on both sides. Um, also, ScalaPy allows to write uh, type wrappers for uh, Python libraries. Even so, it's not something I'm going to, to show you to show here. And one nice thing is it supports uh, both the JVM and Scala native, so you can embed a Python interpreter in a Scala native application. And um, if you want to have more details about ScalaPy, uh, you can have a look at the, the talks that Shadaj gave. Uh, you can easily find them on YouTube. And he dives quite a bit on, in the internals of ScalaPy and what you can do with it. So, uh, but for, uh, for us here, for uh, tooling, what what interests, our, what interests us is uh, what, how, to, how should we set up things for ScalaPy to work fine. And it's not that complex. And so in particular, on the JVM, uh, ScalaPy uses something called a JNA, which is a, a JVM library, I think, that allows to load in a dynamic fashion uh, native libraries. And ScalaPy relies on this. And um, basically, what we need to do for ScalaPy to work fine is to 
to find the right path on installation and set up the right Java properties for JNA to work. And all of this is handled using the Python native libs project here, written by uh, Kian Dang. Uh, so all, all, I go, all I'm going to show here relies on this library here. So, um, and before I start to, to actually show you things, um, just the, my, my goal here in, in what I'm going to show you, my, my goal has been to make things like this work. That, the, that is, the idea is I want to just pass a flag to tools or enable things using a directive here, using Python. And I want, with just this flag, I want to be able to give to, to allow users to call the pi object here that ScalaPy uh, exposes. So I just want to enable a flag, and then I want to call things on this pi object here to call Python libraries that are installed on, uh, on my machine. So um, first, uh, I'm going to show you how this works in uh, Scala CLI. So, um, OK, so demo time. Um, so uh, first thing here is um, I'm going to show you things running on a VM here that runs on Linux because um, I mean, I'm going to, and I'm in particular, I'm going to, to use uh, Matplotlib. I'm going to plot things in Matplotlib from Scala. And there are issues to do this on Mac OS for now, like some kind of, I don't know, UI thing not running on the UI thread or whatever. So I'm going to run things on a Linux VM, and we'll have X11 port forwarding to, to get the Matplotlib display. Um, all right, so I'm going to create a directory here for our project. I'm going to open this in VS Code. So I might need to uh, zoom a bit here. Um, maybe I should change the theme too. Right. Okay, so um, as we don't have a lot of time here, I'm going to first copy a small example here that I prepared and detail things to you. So, um, so I'm creating a new file, let's say uh, test.sc. I'm copying this. So I'm going to use Scala CLI to, uh, to run it. So I'm going to run it already. But let's dismiss this. Scala CLI. I'm going to run Scala CLI in watch mode. So I'm going to do Scala CLI watch this file. So it compares things. Um, right, that's not right. I need to save it. And I'm going to ask Metals to connect to Scala CLI. Right. All right, so what? I have here, it, this is just the, you know, uh, I think the demo on the front page of Matplotlib. I'm going to make that complex in a more complex in a moment. But the idea here is I add uh, this directive here using Python. Um, I'm using Scala 213 because uh, for now, Python support in Scala CLI works better in 213. And yeah, I think. Uh, do you mind changing to a more high contrast? More high contrast? Um, yeah. <coughs> this is better. Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, but th th this shows in a, in a basic example how to use uh, Python library from Scala uh, using ScalaPy. 
So the idea here is this line is equivalent to import NumPy as NP. So what we do here is we call Py module from ScalaPy to load a module and we name it NP. So this is equivalent to, to this. Uh, we load matplotlib and then we use these two modules a bit. So this is all dynamic here. I can go to source, I mean, I go to source brings me to some dynamic thing. And uh, when we run this, we get this window. Um, all right, so this runs on a remote machine. Yeah, cool. Um, so yeah, this is a sign curve. Right? Um, so, and to, to make things a bit more challenging, I'm going to make this example slightly more complex by using a more, uh, an, ex um, an example doing more and more refined things. Just this. So, in this one, um, so it's the same idea, I'm plotting things with Matplotlib. I don't need this. And um, so I'm going to close this to run things again here. What do I do? All right, so here I'm doing a bit more processing with Kala before calling a Python API. So basically I'm loading a file here using OSLib. I'm parsing it manually. I'm parsing dates using Java, and then I'm converting them to Python dates using the date time module here. So I get some date, some uh, uh, sequences of, um, so these are pi.dynamic, but under the hood it's Python dates. And I give that to uh, Matplotlib, and I get this graph. So this data here, um, our uh, actual data, it's the uh, download numbers of courses, so it's the unique IPs per month of the Coursey artifacts on Maven Central. So you can see it starts a bit slowly, and then when Coursey uh, is used by SBT, it grows much faster, and it reaches uh, 500,000 unique IPs a month uh, this day. All right, so um, this shows how we can run things using Python uh, from Scala CLI. And then we, there are um, other commands of Scala CLI that have uh, this kind of Python support. So for example, we have the package command. So if I package this, so, okay, why does it complain? Let it change things. But I think it was still diagnostic. Yeah, never mind. So we have, um, if we package things here, we get a small launcher test, uh, which is a small uh, Java, a small jar. And if I run it, it complains that Java is not installed. So let's set it, set it up with Corsair and run that and just like before, it finds the right Python installation, uh, loads it, I mean, sets things up for ScalaPy, and ScalaPy uh, interacts with Python to plot things here. Um, so that was packaging. Then we also have, uh, I mean, some other Scala CLI subcommands have Python support, like the REPL command. So if I do Scala CLI REPL, I'm going to pass it a few options, such as um, I'm going to do this from Amnite. I'm going to pass Python, and I'm going to use Scala 2.13. And this is going to start Amnite with Scala Pi support uh, all working. So if I try to use Pi, so it's not a value, but it's, uh, it's here. And now I can run things such as uh, what we had before, it is, uh, let's say, uh, this. 
So if I go here, let's copy it here and run it line by line, and we can run that kind of thing from uh, the REPL to plot, uh, to explore data. Or okay. And last one. And we get the plot, uh, yeah, right from the, the REPL. Um, so that's, so yeah, um, we have a last thing in Scala CLI that supports a Python, which is publishing. So if I, and this one, um, uh, right, I can't insert this. Okay. So now I can, uh, let's say, publish that small project, that small project locally. So I'm going to do publish Local this thing is going to complain. So we do this in watch mode. Because it complains about a missing organization. Um, so in D, yeah, there are there's some work to have better error messages here in an open PR. So right now it's a bit cryptic. So but I need so I'm adding an organization to publish. So let's say IO Scala a demo. It's going to complain about a missing version. So let's add one. And if I do this, so it publishes locally a project using Python. So let's check that, um, so yeah, um, what did I do? Now I'm going to fetch these things, this thing using uh, Coursier, and then show you very briefly um, path on support in Coursier. So if I resolve this, it finds it locally, and this depends on uh, some ScalaPy uh, dependencies. All of these were added by uh, by Scala CLI, and um, now if I try to launch this with Coursier, at first it doesn't work because the JNA is not set up for Python, so Scala CLI is having a hard time finding the right uh, lib Python library. But if I pass dash Python, it should set things up correctly. And we should get this window again uh, here. Um, so that's for the launch command. And uh, the bootstrap command, of course, here also supports uh, Python. So if I do CS bootstrap here, um, okay, it has issues finding a main class. I'm not sure why. So it's test SC. So it wrote this, and if I try to run it, it's just like a Scala CLI package before. We get a small jar um, able to run. Uh, that, that runs, I mean, uh, the jar running on JVM, but doing Python things under the hood, and everything is set up correctly when the jar starts. All right, so. Um, so that was for the Python support in uh, both Scala CLI and Coursier. And I'm going to show you one last thing that is not available in, uh, in the upstream project, but which is still quite impressive. And then I'll discuss very briefly uh, what we don't have to make Python support uh, work, work better. Um, so I'm going to, so here I have, um, some a, a development branch of Ammonite uh, checked out, and I'm going to run an Ammonite version. Um, so this is work in something written by Ken Dang again, who is a ScalaPy contributor and who has been a Google Summer of Code uh, student. And um, I'm going to show you uh, basically uh, how to get completions for Python objects from Scala code. So, um, if 
I run Amnites from sources this way. So let's try to use uh, the date time module, say. Uh, right now. So I'm in Scala, so I need to do dt say equals. Um, but I forgot something. Um, yeah, so we don't have a Python option here. So I need to. Um, where is this? Uh, uh, um, right, I have everything here, sorry. So I'm going to set things up just like how the Python option should have, except it doesn't here. So, theoretically, in, um, if the, this goes in, in, the main, in the upstream project, you won't have to do this, this setup. So let's do this and um, this is still some setup. Uh, right. Some more setup. No. Right. And um, so now I have the pi object here and um, what's nice is I can so using Scalapy we can access the global Python namespace using this syntax and I, I have completion for things here so I can complete list for example the Python the global method like this and uh, why doesn't it work object yeah I need to pass it a sequence And there's this kind of thing to do, I think. Yeah. Um, but also, I can do some more refined things. So I can uh, load the module. I can create a date, say. But date time. And I have already completion on the, mod on the module here. So I can do this. I can pass a date. And then I can, I also have completion on this value here. So I can look at the Python method on this dynamic object, which points at the Python, uh, Python object under the hood. Um, so we know we have uh, all these methods uh, here. So, all right, this is a field here. Um, so basically, it shows that we can bring Python completion this is using a Jedi under the hood into Scala. Um, so this work in the repel here, but maybe we, with some more work, we could make it work in the IDE in metals and get completion for Python objects when we do uh, Python from Scala in metals, say. Um, so this is part of the thing that we don't have. So we don't have completion when we do when we use Python object here, we don't have completion uh, dt dot. Yeah, it's some generic method here, and not the actual fields of the Python object. Um, but with uh, with what I showed you from Ammonite, with a bit more work, uh, we could possibly make this work right in some methods and make uh, the using Python from Scala a lot better. Um, another thing. That I didn't discuss here is uh, what about the Python libraries that we use. So here I, I basically um, use things that were Python libraries. I mean, I use Python libraries that were already installed on my machine. I use my Potlib or NumPy. Um, but of course, doing this somehow breaks reproducibility. So if I, you know, if I use the package command or the bootstrap command that I showed you earlier, um, these things. Theoretically, don't need anything. Maybe they, I mean, they need Java, but that's it to, to run. But now, if they use Python, they are going to need the right Python libraries to be installed locally. Um, and so um, that, that's a problem. And maybe um, 
I mean, hopefully with some quite some more work, maybe we could hack path on packaging and uh, try to ship to have the, the Scala packaging, you know, uh, download itself everything it needs to run Python. But it's not uh, something we miss, and that that's a bit of a problem. Um, lastly, uh, something I won't have time to show here is uh, what about if we have some Scala file, some Python file side by side, uh, what about having the Python file call JVM method? And there already exists some projects for that, uh, one particular called uh, Py4j that Spark uses, for example. And um, one nice thing that I didn't show is if we use the, the, the dash dash Python option in Scala CLI here, uh, we, with a few more hacks, I mean a few more set, manual setup, we can get Py4j to running in the Python interpreter inside the JVM process, we can get it to talk back to the JVM in the same process. And so somehow, you know, we, with these things, we can go both ways. We can have Scala talk to Python and Python talk to Scala. Um, but this is not straightforward to, to do, so maybe we can have tooling help for this. Um, but we don't have it yet. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, I think that's all I wanted to show and discuss. So we, yeah, we have a few commands, Scala CLI, Corsier, having some Python support. Um, but I think maybe some more work remains to do, to, I mean, some things that are easily uh, doable, like maybe completion in the REPL, then more complex completion in the IDE. And then there are some more, more complex issues that we could tackle, like packaging. But this is going to require a lot more, lot more work. Um, all right, so that's the end of this talk. And uh, so if you have questions. Thank you very much for your talk. I was wondering about uh, typing compatibility issues. Uh, how do you handle that? What, like, what? let's say we have a data frame that's uh, initialized in uh, with NumPy. How, how do you handle it with uh, with Scala code? What, what, what do you mean typing? Uh, like, it's, you mean things that are typed as dynamic in Scala? Yeah. And, um, yeah. Here I only showed uh, dynamic things, but yeah, uh, Scala Py allows to define uh, you know, typed interfaces for Python libraries. So you can type things uh, after the fact, you know, uh, but you need to write wrappers for it. Um, I think there are already a few for NumPy, maybe. Uh, yeah. Thank you for the talk. Uh, I have two questions. <coughs> yeah. Firstly, um, uh, when you create an object from Python uh, libraries, where uh, is stored this object in Python process or in JVM? Um, so, but, but both live in the same process. You know, the Python interpreter is loaded in the JVM process, and we, we interact with it through some C API. Uh, but if you, yeah, in the REPL, if you create a variable, I don't know if this is what you mean. Um, um, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, see, if I do pi.evol, I think. No, uh, I don't recall. Uh, pi.exec. Right, yeah, yeah oh, it's an old uh, version. Um, let me. Yeah, if I do this, you mean where does the, the N live, for example? Or yes, is it a Java object or a Python object? Um, why doesn't this work? Uh, um, yeah, I'm using an old 
an old so, but, but the idea, I'm using an old Scala Pi version here, but the idea is uh, you can do, the, if I do, if I run n equals two on the Python side, I can access it through the global scope. That would be, this is what we sh that should have worked. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, so thanks.